thought we'd start our time together with a little car alarm action. Cheers. Welcome back to The Commonplace. It is that time of year where I, Autumn, am dressed like me, Autumn, sitting in my chair that looks like Autumn because I am willing Autumn to come to all of us as quickly as possible so that I can once again feel alive because I am not named Summer. If you didn't know that, my name is Autumn. Welcome to The Commonplace. I'm really glad you're here. Today, we are starting the first in a two, two-part video series, I guess you could call it, where we're discussing three notebooks that I believe all mother teachers should keep. We do one today. We're gonna do two next time. And the first one is called A Commonplace Book. Now, yes, this is The Commonplace, and that is for two reasons. One, that God does uncommonly good things in the commonplaces, like your home, whether you're a mom or you're also a mother teacher. The things you do in your home are used in extraordinary ways. And so, yes, that is one reason why we are The Commonplace. But then the second is that I am an actual keeper of a real commonplace book. And if you don't know what those are, don't worry, that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna run through what a commonplace book is, and then I'm gonna talk about how I use them in two forms. I actually have two forms and one I think will surprise you and just kind of offer some suggestions about how you might keep them because I've realized that when I talk about adding something new to a routine for a mom, a lot of people feel like, hmm, another thing. There's another thing for me to do. But actually, what I think you will find is that this is a tool to help you on that journey of transforming your home, of forming your home towards God and towards truth, goodness, and beauty. So we're going to start with the commonplace book. And I am going to say from the start that I do not hear, I'm grabbing mine, one of mine, that I do not hear enough chatter about commonplace books in the Charlotte Mason world. Why is that? I don't know, especially because Charlotte Mason talks about a very similar concept as the book of mottos. So she calls it the book of mottos. What it is, because don't we all love to come up with our own clever name for things that already exist, is a commonplace book. It's a book, most simply, of recorded quotes and thoughts that you have come across and loved and want to reflect upon further. That's it. That is the most simple definition I can give you. I have noticed when talking to people that if you have learned about commonplace books, particularly from women, then there is a whole other angle to commonplacing about like journaling your personal ideas and feelings and reactions. And you can do that. There are a lot of ways to commonplace. There, I, there's no one right way to do it. There's kind of like a bound to stay in, but otherwise there's freedom. But I've primarily learned about this from male classical educators. And so the posture of the commonplace book is that you are growing in humility. You realize that you do not know everything, that you are not the source of all wisdom, and that in this great conversation that has been had throughout time, this great tradition that we're passing on, that we are now in charge of preserving and protecting and passing to the next generation, that you could learn a great deal from them. And in fact, you should. You should sit at the feet of the greats and be quiet and learn. And that is how I treat a commonplace. But when I commonplace, I am simply pulling lovely quotes from things I read or things I hear and putting them down on paper or, oh, this is slightly contentious, in an app. We're gonna talk about it. So why commonplace? Let's just figure out what is what is the practice. If Seneca and Marcus Aurelius did it, and John Milton and Da Vinci and C.S. Lewis, if all these great thinkers and doers and makers have commonplaced, why? Well, there are a couple reasons. The first thing is that it's an aid for memory. We moderns have pretty bad memories because, generally speaking, we have little tiny computers in our back pockets all of the time. Like Googling is now a verb. We want information we can have it, but that's not the same thing as knowledge. And our memories, our inner thought life, is what we're beholding and what we're becoming because it's what we're constantly reflecting back to ourselves. And so for moms particularly, when we read something really lovely, when we're given a living idea, when we see something inspiring, when we see something we want to emulate or embody, we record it into our commonplace books, which that means one, you've read it, Two, you've thought about it because you've decided you want to commonplace it. Three, you've done the act of writing it out by hand or possibly typing it into something. And then four, that, that sets you up to continue thinking about it. You'll be narrating it to yourself. You'll be seeing how it applies to other things in your life. And in doing that, this is very practical. It shapes the contours of your inner thought life. Like I said, it helps you turn towards a more clear, more true picture of the good life, of the flourishing life, which is what we humans are always pursuing on, a, on an unconscious level. Um, and it also gives you a framework 
for your home life. So if you are someone who struggles with complaining or you, you know, get the noonday saint or saint, not a saint, the noonday devil, <laughs> the acedia, and you feel like, oh, nothing really matters. I don't really want to have to get up and do the right thing. If you start to feel like that, if you've been commonplacing beautiful pictures of women who laid down their lives, women who gave a kick in the pants when needed, um, witty things. If you've ever commonplaced anything from Bleak House by Charles Dickens, you know the power of home. And these things can actually stir you to right action, which will help you with right feeling. So it's, it's to form your memory on lovely noble ideas, but in order that you may go and have meaningful action. Intellectual virtue is never supposed to stay in your mind. If it does, then it's not really virtue. That's kind of a thing we've talked about. I'll try and link to other videos or things below about podcasts and whatnot, but that's the kind of stuff we talked about in Patreon. We'd love to have you join as always. And um, it, it actually does shape what you're doing in your home. So if you're kind of feeling like you're in a funk, consider something like a commonplace book, which maybe would not be your first idea to, to kind of course correct there, but actually might really be helpful. So based off that one, the second one is it fills your soul, your inner thought life with really good things. People can get nervous when they commonplace the very first thing, like oh, it needs to be so perfect. It needs to be witty and it needs to be beautiful and it needs to be good and I need to love it forever as if you're like tattooing it on your body. But you gotta get over that. Just commonplace something. I like to commonplace something really funny at the beginning of a book because it just breaks the book in. You know, it's been baptized by something I can now continue on without being so fretful. And um, I often will then commonplace my children. So I actually do have sections for all three of my kids. You can commonplace things like that. It doesn't always have to be the serious classical deep thinkers. You don't always need it to be uh, Marcus Aurelius or something, but you can uh, just start with something that makes you laugh. That's, that's a good thing. But filling up your mind with good things causes good things to start pouring out of your mouth. That's actually why we give our children living ideas, right? We're focused on what we are bringing into their thought lives because we know that's what's going to work out in their lives. The same is true for moms. We need to be commonplacing as a regular practice because it allows us to fill ourselves with good things. And the third point, it also allows us to stop reading too quickly and to think deeply. Now I'm not saying you have to start reading at a snail's pace. That's not what moms need to be doing, right? But it does force you to slow down on a number of levels. First, if you're commonplacing, you have to pause at the end of a chapter, at the end of a couple chapters, however you break it up, in order to actually go and commonplace. So you need to stop and then you revisit the ideas, you're thinking about them again, you're not just moving on. The second thing is that it causes you to stop because you have to decide what is worth commonplacing. There are some books legitimately, I mean, you can see some of my shelves, that I treat the book like my commonplace. Otherwise, I'd be commonplacing the whole thing, like Supper of the Lamb. I would commonplace the entire book. So that is its own commonplace. But generally, commonplacing forces you to find the best idea, the, the right sentence to capture an entire chapter because you can't commonplace an entire book. It's actually a good fence to keep you from just mindlessly going after everything. You have to think and weigh and decide. And that forces you to engage with the material in a deeper way. Now, I talk about this in Patreon, um, being a book glutton. It's something that we classical moms are often tempted towards. And one of those is that we have the perfect book list and we fly through it in the summer. We're reading every single Jane Austen novel as quickly as we can, just so we can say that we did it, right? We're not actually engaging with her ideas deeply. We're not actually enjoying the story. We're not letting it settle in our bones and take form and shape and change how we live. We're just showing off that we've read all of the books. And book gluttony takes a lot of forms. Again, you can find that Minnesota in Patreon, but it is, um, it is a helpful way to stay away from book vice because book vice is a real thing. And then lastly, depending on how you organize your commonplace book, and I am gonna talk about practical ways to do it, um, you have the ability to find relationships that you would otherwise miss. So I've talked about before that I think you should be reading between three and five books at a time across disciplines. Um, you should read very widely. You should never just be reading educational philosophy or practical theology, like you must read widely. Um, there are many parts to the image bearer. God speaks to all of them in scripture, and so that's a good pattern to follow. However, um, when you are reading reading between three and five books and you are commonplacing them, it is far more likely that you are going to find connections between the ideas that you would have missed before. And understanding how knowledge rightly relates first to God, then to other knowledge, and then to man is a hallmark of a Mason education. And so for moms to be able to do that regularly, for this to be tacked on maybe once a week to your mother culture time, it will have enormous impact on your mind, how you see the world knitted together 
glimpses of glory, um, an invitation into God's love, right? That all of it is connected and that it's all working together ultimately for God's glory and for our good. That is just a few of the benefits of commonplacing. And I, oh, I cannot recommend it enough. Now, how do I actually commonplace? So there are a couple ways people do it. I'm gonna give a wide variety. So like I said, there's not one singular way to commonplace. I do have two things here for you. So this is my commonplace book. This is my phone. You might've seen one before. Um, so when I am commonplacing ideas that I like, um, and they are, hmm, how would I describe it? They're just really good ideas. Oftentimes I will commonplace them into an app called Evernote. I know the internet just freaked out. Like a classical educator who thinks that Plato's Academy is the only way to run a school just died. Actually, he's probably not listening to my videos, so we're probably still good. They haven't found out. But um, I do that because I can tag my posts in um, Evernote. And I like that because then when I'm searching for something or I'm looking for a connection between something, I can pick the tag and they, everything that I've ever tagged with that pops back up. So that's one way I do that. It's not the only way to do it. I also use a book. So for the things that actually hit me on a personal level when I'm reading, for the things that I'm like, oh, that's a deficiency in my soul or in my mind or in my life, or oh, that's the perfect way to say that. I've never been able to put words to that before. Oh, I really wanna think about this idea longer. If it fits more in that category, then it goes down in my notebook. And that is because when you write it by hand, you in a sense almost experience an embodiment of the idea to a degree. And what I mean by that is you get the, the joy of writing down something that C.S. Lewis once wrote, right? Like if you come across a line that you love of his and then you actually write it out, your mind is working through a part of that process with him. It's not a one for one. Obviously we're not C.S. Lewis. But you do get to write out thoughts others have had in a way that is a connection point. And so for those, I will write them in here. They're not organized in here. Some people hate that because you have to kind of guess how many sections you're gonna need per category you make up. And so it's hard to know how much room you're gonna want in a commonplace, right? So notebooks get a little messy, but when you look back through, it's like a history of what you've been learning. It's a history of your reading, a history of your thought life, and that's really cool too. Now, some people use uh, notebook cards. That's something you could do, note cards, and you just organize them into, say, a box, and so you can keep them in the sections, sort of the way I tag them in Evernote. That's one thing you can do. But when do you actually commonplace? That's a question I get. So here's how I actually do commonplacing. When I'm reading, if I find something that I like, I will put a very tiny dot next to that sentence on the page, and I will dog ear the page. That is so when I go back, I know exactly where it is on the page. Let me save you some time. I used to just dog ear the page and that meant I was rereading full pages constantly trying to find exactly where the quote was. So leave yourself a dot. Some people commonplace at the end of each reading because it's right fresh in their mind and they can do it then. Some people wait until the end of a chapter. Some people wait until the end of a book. I have done the latter two options. If you wait until the end of a book and you were reading multiple books, particularly large books, that can be a little overwhelming. I'm gonna be honest, you're gonna feel like, well, I don't know if I really wanna go commonplace all of that. So I recommend doing it after a chapter or doing it once a week. And so pick a time, maybe it's your Sunday afternoon, leisure activity, where you sit and you commonplace from the week. But having a smaller chunk is probably going to help busy homeschool moms with little kids keep up with the practice. And those are just some helpful tips. There are a lot of ways to do it. I'm gonna link um, a couple of things below that you could listen to that will give you some more. And know that yes, oh yes, of course you can definitely add your own personal reflections. What you think about the quote, that was something I mentioned at the beginning. That is how I've heard women talk about commonplacing. I, if you are at all curious why I don't do that is because I think that making it about me quickly in the process ruins the point of commonplacing. I'm supposed to be learning. I'm not supposed to be immediately trying to apply it to myself or think about what I think. I'm trying to learn about wisdom from what others have said. So my last little tip. Now, next time I'm gonna talk about the last two notebooks I think mothers should keep, which would be the mother's diary and the log book. And so I'll see you guys next week for that.